6.0. Yeah, the city of Napa. Chaos hit the Bay Area hours before daybreak. The epicenter in Napa, California. That's wine country. Within minutes, the governor's office of emergency services activated its state operations center and issued its first report, relaying early information to responders. Mark Gillarducci took the lead and got in front of the camera for a quick announcement. A lot of what's happening in the state operations center now is we're working with the local governments, getting assessments of the total amount of damage. Uh, being able, we're coordinating the response of uh, fire and rescue and EMS resources into the area, law enforcement to be able to support Napa, Solano, Vallejo, uh, and Sonoma counties. By sunup, the extent of damage was becoming more apparent. Probably the most significant damage we've seen is in the downtown uh, portion of the city of Napa. The earthquake's force shook buildings until their brick facades crumbled to the ground or the structures collapsed. Homes rocked and rumbled from their foundations. Upper floors fell onto lower floors, while other homes caught fire and burned to the ground. Lost, uh, three on this side and another one over here. Roads split and water mains broke. By mid-morning, the state was coordinating a full-blown emergency response. All state agencies are uh, activated and are operating here in the state operations center or in the field. All of the local and state uh, uh, coordination centers are operational and coordinating with each other uh, so that we can provide rapid uh, assistance where necessary. The State Operations Center at Cal OES headquarters in Sacramento is the nerve center for emergency response to disasters anywhere in the state. We have people out there and they're letting us know what they're seeing and what needs the state might be able to address and that's what this whole team of people is here to do. This large team of people is known collectively as the Incident Support Team or IST. Each member has a very specific role, important to the overall success during an emergency. Uh, this may be of importance to utilities. New information pours in all day and all night, so there's a rotating 12-hour shift. Response is about gathering all information about the situation, boiling it down, and prioritizing needs. Every new bit of info is detailed in a centralized database and verified. During the facility, the field nursing facility that was on generator power, is that still on generator power have that issue been resolved? We've heard that it has been resolved, but I want to go through and make sure that we're not getting conflicting information. But as far as I know, that, that, that has been resolved. Okay, thank you. Critical updates from dozens of responding agencies keep everyone on the same page. Any alibis from anybody else, any of the other counties or state agencies or anyone else, because this is a good coordinating tool, this call. It's, it's as close as we're going to get to face-to-face. -to -face. Confirmed disaster updates are then shared with the media. While Director Gillarducci answers questions for a local television news station, Deputy Director Tina Curry finds a moment to talk live on the air with an Arizona radio station. And Deputy Director Kelly Houston prepares for a late-night international Skype interview. While across the hall, folks from across various agencies in the Joint Information Center coordinate media interviews, distribute the latest disaster details, and publish important website articles and social media messages. Since last night, um, there's been a lot of progress made. Monday morning, the director gathers his executive staff for another round of calls, getting up to the minute briefings from every agency involved. Any reports or questions from the various agencies or departments? The Secretary Gravit here at Veterans Affairs. Uh, the, the engineers are on the ground at, at the Veterans Home in Youngville as we speak. At Napa, we have two buildings. Their administrative buildings are red tagged. 24 hours into the emergency, the State Operations Center is running at full speed with more than 100 people working in synchronicity. And luckily, the damage sustained in Napa, Sonoma, and Vallejo doesn't seem as bad as officials had first feared. We're moving rapidly into what we call recovery mode. Hey Al, it's Eric. I'm in Root up north. Can you um, give me an update on the Happy Fire? While aftershocks continue in Napa, a new fire in Siskiyou County has Eric Lamoureux mobilizing his inland region team and coordinating resources. Our uh, field ESC is in the Wairika area, so he's ready for deployment if they need that. 
All right, like I said, I'm en route up there. Keep me updated if anything changes. Appreciate it. Copy that. All right, thanks. The response was rapid, but overlapping disasters are typical and pose challenges he's trained well to handle. But a disaster doesn't end when the flames are out. A disaster doesn't end when people are allowed to return to their homes. There's a long-term recovery process that takes place after any emergency or disaster. And it requires the, the efforts of emergency managers at all levels of government to come together and work together to coordinate these tremendous efforts. Now it's on to the next phase. We have engineers that can be dispatched and in fact have been dispatched that can help building officials make those quick assessments to the safety of the buildings. Hi Terry, this is Tim Smith with Cal OES. Recovery efforts are in full swing. Teams assemble in the Napa Public Works building but not until after it was deemed safe enough to enter following its own damage assessments. When these came over, snapped it. A block away, the city's emergency operations center is damaged on the outside, but inside, there's a flurry of activity. This is what responders have trained for and are now putting into action. PG&E crews carefully navigate debris littered streets in downtown Napa to hunt for broken gas lines. Not far away, inspectors are figuring out which homes are safe and which aren't. Trying to hit the dangerous stuff today and not looking at every little thing that's damaged. Those that aren't safe are issued a red placard, which is then posted on the building. So far, more than 116 homes and businesses have been deemed unsafe to enter. Response to and recovery from an emergency like the Napa earthquake is a massive undertaking that demands dedicated professionals who can work in top form both as an individual and as part of a team. It would not work if we didn't have this team environment and we practice all the time. Everybody's really come together on this and I gotta say the, the, this really falls into the way we do things uh, in California. It's very well coordinated. Uh, it's consistent with our plans and we rolled it out efficiently and effectively. Cal OES has the unique role of bringing it all together um, on behalf of the, the uh, governor's office to make sure that, that the state is attending to needs of communities in times of emergency.